It's the Stick and Act Show. That's Mike. I'm Adam. And this week we have Alyssa Gaudet from Women's Golf Day on the program. And we play a game called Snap Judgment. Stick and Act Show starts right now. This is the Stick and Hack Show. Conversation, discussion, debate, and golf talk from a stick, Mike Ryan, and the hack, Adam Grubb. Boys, you are up. Hey, welcome in, everybody. Stick and Hack Show, the most sophisticated golf show in the free world, presented by Perfect Pro-Ams. I'm your host, Adam Grubb. That's your host, Mike Ryan. The Stick, Mike, what is up? Not much. Excited. Again. Uh, <laughs> that's my new thing. I'm just going to say I'm excited. Can we day. not do it no, that way? I won't. Okay, I won't. thank that's you very much. That's the last time. All right, appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> guest this week is uh, Alyssa Gade, uh, president of Executive Golf International, a strategic consulting and marketing firm and founder of Women's Golf Day. And she's going to be talking about that uh, here in just a little bit. She has a fascinating story, been in the golf space for quite some time and is doing some amazing things inside uh, inside the golf ropes for, for women, but also just for the game itself, the community, which is kind of what we're trying to do here as well. Stick and Hack is to build a community of like-minded golfers. She's been doing it much longer than we have, and uh, we're excited to bring her into the program and talk to her about her history as well as Women's Golf Day. Hey, do you know about Women's Golf Day, Mike? Uh, I had not until we uh – Decided to have her on. So your your wife but plays. I'm intrigued by it, yeah. And she's your wife is better than you, from my understanding. Is that correct? Sure. <laughs> uh, your wife plays. <laughs> my wife plays. Uh, should we? Yeah. And I'll get into that story at some point. Um, I, it wasn't my my goal in life to be playing golf with her when we first started dating. Yeah. In fact, I th I think I told her no. Like this is my thing. It was a very very chauvinistic 24 year old <laughs> idiot response right i'm like no the golf is my thing and now we're playing we're playing together and it's it's phenomenal it's fantastic yeah. and it, it is to get away from the kids and get away from from life for a little bit and just play golf it's it's great and i'm i'm excited for her to be become more involved in this and hopefully she'll be part of women's golf day as well with your wife yeah i was kind of the exact opposite i had to coax my wife into doing it oh really it. yeah she was like absolutely not i have yeah. nothing to do shocking with that. but i the funny well <laughs> i got her into it and yeah. now she says how much she hates it, but I don't believe her because no. I see her every week. Plays. Every week, every weekend, she is yeah, she's in some sort of tournament. Yeah, she's all, <laughs> she's her, all about it with her forty five yeah. handicap. But right? she acts like she hates it. Right. So. Well, that's how that's how <laughs> that's how it goes. Um, all right, so we're excited to have Alyssa on the uh, on the program here in just a little bit. First up, Mike, though, uh, hitting it further, uh, the professional landscape today of golf is making golf easier with the technology and the ability to drive the ball longer and further by these pros and it's scaring people to death <laughs> because the, the, the people, the higher ups in the golf world are saying, hold on a second. We are having to, to redo courses. We're having to uh, long make, make holes longer. It is, uh, yeah. it's scaring people to death. Right. And now relying on data from industry experts, tours, stakeholders, the higher ups in the golf world of PGA, uh, they unveiled a two year research finding. Okay. It's a 15-page statement of conclusions, a 99-page summary of the research that was gathered from 57 individual reports. 99 pages doesn't seem like a summary to me. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Hey, Jim, uh, did you get that summary done? Yeah, it's 100 pages. Yeah. yeah. I'll, oh, I'll nice. let you know in the next two weeks when, once I've finished reading it. <laughs> nice work, Jim. Way to, way to <laughs> overindulge on the summary, you yeah. idiot. Yeah. Uh, so 99-page summary of the research gathered 57 indi individual reports. They came to the conclusion through all that, that increasing distance is bad for the game. Yeah. I, uh, I kind of read through that thing, and I just... The summary? The 99-page <laughs> summary? Not you couldn't read the show no, notes. No, no, no. But you no, read, I read the 99-page summary? The, the show notes. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that Cliff's notes is all right, I do. Right. I, I, don't, I, don't read, I don't read books. Um, no, it w I don't... Is, uh, is, philosophically, I don't agree with it. Right. Is distance making golf easier for for people? And I think it's pros? making it easier for pros probably on some level, but they're, they're so good that I don't think it's making that much of a difference. They're so I good, and golf is so hard in and of itself. The distance, while, while it might help – now, here my, my contention is this. I don't really lo love watching golf where you uh, hit driver, yeah. uh, 325, you hit a wedge or a nine in – to 20 feet within 20 feet and yeah. and birdie putt or or par putt that to me isn't isn't great yeah. but it's the same as the NBA in in some cases in that the NBA in the 80s compared to the NBA today are two completely different games yeah. because of the athletes themselves yes. because of their exactly. speed because of what uh, of their training and and uh, and the gym time 
All that is different and it has changed yeah. because of the person. Golf has changed from the 80s to today because of the technology. Well, the I problem? think it's a combination. I think it's both. I think it's com- I think it's it's technology, but I think if you look back historically, golf professional golfers were not they didn't have fitness regimens. They weren't right. they didn't have all of the the fitness technology available to them or nor did they care. Right. The culture of it was so much different that I think fitness probably has more to do with what we're talking about from a distance standpoint than it does with the technology. Really? I think there's I think there's a slight advantage with the technology, but I think that the fitness has more to do with it. You've got guys that are they're training year round. They're in the best shape they've ever been in their lives. You didn't ever have that before. You might have had one or two people back in the day that that were you know really into fitness. Gary Player is one person yeah. I can that comes to the top of my mind. But Mike, but there's a there's a uh, in this this past the Waste Management Open they yeah. they had a par four that was over five maybe it was Waste Management or the one before doesn't matter. It was a yeah. five hundred and ten or twenty yard par four. I know just to make it fair for that for that hole for those yeah, people i get that that's crazy i get that but it's just the it's it's the pros only right that's the other that and this gets to the root of kind of what we're trying to do is they're so focused on the tour the tour is like a fraction of the community of golf right, right? it's a very small fraction yeah. it now granted it's a big money maker and it, it generates interest in the game but i think they're too focused on worrying about you know what the pros are doing the technology for the average player is absolutely making it easier and more enjoyable for them to play the game of that's golf. That's a great point because if I, yeah, yeah no, that's an excellent, that's an excellent point. I have no follow up for that. That's the, that's the point of the day. I like uh, it, and we're six minutes in. Mark mark it down. Mark it, mark I, the tape. I just Shane. I just shut Adam up. That was wild. <laughs> I'm wow. um, I'm shocked. Right all now. right, so. For, for the distance <laughs> and for what's happening in golf, it does boil down for me to money and the entertainment of the sport for the PGA. Back to your point, yeah. uh, they've got long drive uh, competitions and leagues. Um, th- there's The question is, how do you even go back in technology? How do you? Yeah. How, how would you even go to someone and say, hey, can you just eat and mm-hmm. not run and not, not uh, go strength conditioning and, and all this and just, just yeah. play golf? Yeah. Golf is hard enough as it is. Distance for the for the pros is it a problem? No, people love to see that drive go three twenty five, three fifty. Yep. In some cases, that Bubba Watson has made a career out of mm-hmm. hitting the ball long. Dustin Johnson, all of these guys, those top level pros, and they hit it hard. The, the other point to that, to me, is that's most of the people that I find that have a problem with the whole distance and hitting driver wedge the whole time are people that have been in golf the majority of their lives or they understand the nuances of the game and they so they have an appreciation for that right from a growth of the game standpoint i think that guys hitting the ball that far is what attracts people that ha- that have never like looked at golf before or cared so you don't think the technology of the golf ball technology of the uh of the drivers themselves yeah. um, has as much influence on the distance as just the in the pros, yeah, you do in the amateur ranks and, and right. most people. Correct? I agree. Right. And you have no problem with, with what's happening in the game. I don't. I think it's good for the game, to be honest, personally. I think it's the exact opposite of what they their hypothesis is. All right. So once again, stick and hack is showing a problem, <laughs> bringing I've, no solution. I don't think there's a, I don't think you need a, a solution. I think, but they I don't, do. They, they do. have a 99-page That's fine. summary. That's fine. 57 individual reports. That doesn't mean they're right. Can you imagine that guy's responsibility over two years? Do you think that was punishment? <laughs> yeah, Do you think it was punishment? Or you so think whoever that guy is, I apologize to you. I just shot your entire <laughs> last two years of your life down. But <laughs> he is so upset. As if it matters. I'm right. sure, I'm sure right. it's devastating to him. But <laughs> it, just know, painstaking 20-hour days for two years getting this together for, yeah. for the summary, which <laughs> I've already summed up. Increasing distance is bad for the game, apparently. Yeah. That's the summary. Right. Not 99 pages. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, we shift gears now to the conversation. Alyssa Gaudet is on the Stick and Hack Show. Alyssa, welcome into the program. Good morning. How are you? Adam and Mike. <laughs> That's right. Uh, That's right. Also known as uh, Stick and Hack. Stick there, so you, you obviously can tell just by looking at us that he's a better golfer than me, and that's fine. I get it. <laughs> It, we get that we get that a lot. 
Uh, mm. We'll ask you, and we'll get to you to your uh, your bio and some of the things that you're doing first. But I, I want to get your thoughts on it. You've heard us talk about the distance of of uh, of the drive right now and what's happening in the game of golf. Do you think technology in the game of golf is hurting the the sport itself? I think, as you guys pointed out, it's really it would be um, I think beneficial. I don't want to get in trouble here, but. It, that's really like a pro thing. You know what I mean? I, I think it, when you bring it into the amateur, it just makes it a lot more confusing. And we don't need to, I think, be that high tech. I, I don't know how they regulate or put, you know, rules for the pros and rules for um, for the amateur. You know, it's not the same like with any other sport. It's not like, oh, we have a different basketball for. Right. But yet the other sports, most people aren't able to. Uh, even get close to um, competing in um, NHL, MLB, NFL. Absolutely. So So you don't think it's a problem either. So there's no problem. So why did they do a a, a research findings and and a study then? Just for something for somebody to do, you think? (laughs) Does anybody have have anything for Jim to do? (laughs) No, no, no. I think that the industry, let's not forget that that – think that is the one part of our industry that actually does uh, embrace change (laughs) is technology. And there are a lot of companies out there that are making a lot of money. But I think what happened is they moved to almost like the fashion is where a new driver is coming out every season. And I think, you know, they're not selling them. Does it, does the amateur guy really need a new driver every season? And I think that's where they got themselves in trouble. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. I agree. You know, yeah, maybe once a year or once every other year. It wasn't like, you know, before it wasn't like that. And I think yeah. keep up with technology and that, that they have the ability to, to make these advancements. But I think in the marketplace, and, and then you have to go ask, you know, a Callaway titleist, ping yeah. whomever, what's your sell through? I mean, that becomes a, a real, I think it's a business thing that's happening. And they're trying to figure out from a business perspective, do they need to be doing that? I mean, that's what I'm saying. I think the tour players, yes. And within you know, maybe the the governing bodies need to rein that in, or how much do they want to rein it in? And then next is you got a whole industry based on uh, producing clubs, so it is of great interest to them to figure that out. Yeah. Well, you have uh, is there you- an appetite for the consumer market to be buying a club once a quarter? I think that that's a very low percentage from what I know from the people that I've dealt with over the years. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like you know, TJ Tour Superstores or Golfsmith in their day. Like, how much are you moving product? They're sitting there with a lot of inventory yeah no indeed well you've had a uh, long and storied career in in golf Alyssa Gaudet is our guest president of executive golf international you currently run women's golf day it's a four-hour experience happening globally june 2nd of this year where women and girls can experience golf for the first time or where current players can play and engage with women interested in golf it's being hosted at golf courses and retail locations around the world uh june 2nd 2020 you are the uh, founder of women's golf day you have been in this space for 20 or, or 25 years. And in, in some cases, you are a, a accomplished author. You were, uh, have worked with the PGA. You have been in this world for a long, long time. You have finally been the one to say, hey, there's nothing here to grow the game for women at this scale. Let's try this. Um, what were you thinking when you said, let's have a women's golf day globally and we can make it happen? Yeah, well, I, it wasn't like I woke up and said, hey, this is a globally. <laughs> but um, yeah. uh, thank you for that, first of all, very much. Um, so w- it was born out of frustration. Yes, I've been in the industry for like 20 some odd years, 20 years now. Started when I was six. Yes, I know um, that. I did the math. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, I mean, there's a lot of conferences and things and um we're always talking about how to get more women, but I don't think that uh, they were able to really come up or similar. This is where studies and things are good, or at least looking. I, I am a little bit of a data nerd in some de- degree, and I read all these studies, and they said that women were put to come in, but the first to leave as well. They didn't feel comfortable. They didn't feel welcome. They didn't know what to do. And I think at the end of the day, it's we're all the same, but we learn differently or we uh, adapt to things differently. And women definitely do differently than men. So the, uh, we did a beta test. I talked to a lot of MCOs. That's how we came up with the first Tuesday in June, which is when it is. So I talked to the Dana Garmanis from Troon and, and uh, Matt Corey from PJ Tour Superstore at the time. Now he's at the tour. But these are all industry leaders and said, this is what we're looking to do. 
do it at the beginning of the season. Don't do it on a Monday because that's when you have a um, a lot of charity events. The horses are making money. Uh, obviously, a weekend we were going against um, uh, competition. Yeah. So the idea was, which is a very difficult task, has proven to be is let's get everybody to play in the sandbox. We we're just talking about you know other leagues and stuff. You know, our industry is the only one. There's no one Roger Goodell. I mean, there is a lot of governing bodies, a lot of people in there. And what we're trying to do is we stay in our own lane, one day, four-hour experience. Anybody can sign up. The event can be public or private, and they can charge a fee or not. It's their own micro-business for the day. And then you get Valderamas and Olympic clubs and Westchesters and private clubs that can do it. And Top Golf, PG Tour Superstores, Troon courses, all the club corp, all those guys. Everybody can. There's, there's nothing stopping anybody from doing it. Yeah. Well, you you probably heard us at the at the start of this. Both of our wives play. I've got three girls, um, so I am I'm inundated in in, in this in this space and, and wanting uh, this to continue to grow and and women in golf uh, specifically uh, here locally. I think there's there's a, a need, but but globally as well. So what you're doing is, is, is phenomenal and, and, and exciting. Were you prepared for what this event would become? Um, and are you just getting started kind of in your quest to collect this, uh, this thinking and this reality of, of women in golf? Yeah, we're going into now our fifth year. And I guess the positive is that, um, you know, it's still probably is something that is best suited for a governing body. Cause this is not a, you know, get rich quick scheme. Um, but I think it's much needed. And like I said, we, what we try to do is get rid of the fragmentation. Here's a one stop, easy thing you can do. I always say it's like the New York marathon inverted. Instead of everybody coming to us for one day, we go to them. And uh, I think it, what we found too is, is we're in a developed market in the U S and Canada for that matter. But we do have people in Uganda that are participating and around the world. And, um, we had one course in Saudi Arabia. I mean, Wow. Let me just worry about the drive. So that, yeah. you know, there's a lot of ways that we are softly pushing frontiers, opening doors. Um, I think old, young, fat, skinny, whatever. This is one place where you can go, no judgment, easy, fun, light. And then from there, which we you know, have a monthly newsletter, things like that, is we encourage them to go to all these other wonderful, whether it's a get golf ready, a first tee, uh, you know, Ladies Golfing Union in the um, in the UK, or a, a PGA professional or LPGA professional, continue on at your appetite. I'm very cognizant of, you know, I think I come from a business side, and we don't have to turn everybody into a hardcore league player, but you need the women to get the children, no matter what their gender, boy or girl. Yeah. So that's just a fact of reality. I doubt anybody's going to buy a golf uh, house on a golf course without their wife's approval. And um, I tried. I can I can attest to that. <laughs> I personally, I try, I've, I've been trying for years, and it's not going well. Yeah. Exactly. I was able to convince her. I convinced mine somehow. Oh, good for you. Good for you. I love that. That's awesome. Um, and I don't think that we um, we're the only industry. I say this all the time. I speak. We're the only industry that has this golf widow. What right. is that? The right. soccer moms, and they're not playing soccer. Yeah. They're just dropping the kid off at a soccer practice. Yeah, so right. how do you become a soccer mom from driving to soccer practice, and yet we've got golf. we got to eradicate that. Just it's a warm fuzzy. And like I said, if you, no judgment. If you want to play twice a year, nine and wine, God bless. But if that woman decides, because she's had a great experience and she loves hanging out there, she's going to host her parents 50th wedding anniversary right. or child 16th that one day f and b event i promise you yeah. profit will generate more money than if that woman played once a week for the entire year right agree agree for sure so uh, Alyssa, like, Alyssa, would you consider yourself um a lover of golf an activist a connector all of the above like wh how do you view yourself uh kind of in the in the golf landscape yeah, um, probably all of the above. I play. I don't play that often anymore as much as you think because when you, you know, as we all say, right, we work in the business, you never get out. Yeah. Um, but um, I do play. I did not come from a uh, competitive background. Yeah. Um, in a random sidebar, I started taking polo lessons, which is 
golf on a horse. <laughs> like, super a, challenging. Which I would be terrible I, at. Yeah, that's a whole other show, Alyssa. <laughs> that, that ain't the stick and yeah. axe show. We can we can barely play play golf. Well, yeah. that is my stick and hack. Trust me, I'm hacking around there. <laughs> but um, it definitely, uh, what I realize is what I feel like a lot of CEOs have always said, it makes you focus. Like there's no, there's no room for error there. No, I'm yeah. going to be on, on my butt, but um, I don't want to digress. I, I, you know, there is, I love golf. I love seeing people get involved. I love all the things that, um, that golf does more than the sport, like the connecting people and getting out in nature. It's one of the last frontiers. I am a big proponent of shorter nine holes, make it socially acceptable even that is going to be a couple hour experience. You know, you should go and hit a few on the driving range, play and have a drink at the bare minimum. It's not lunch or dinner or whatever. Right. So yeah, that's, 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 that's my, my idea. Uh, so it's my schedule. Yeah. That's, that's what I do. Yeah. Nine is nine holes is still probably a three hour experience. Well, and, Easy. and luckily the uh, USGA has come through and they've changed the uh, handicap uh, situation for 2020 to allow um, less rounds for somebody to garner a handicap because that's been a, a, a roadblock in, in the past to get uh, yeah. certain people into uh, events or competitions or, or the club events. They had to have a handicap, and you can't get a handicap unless you play a 1,000 rounds or something ridiculous. They've yeah. changed all that. Again, uh, eliminating a roadblock for more people to be involved in the sport and to, uh, to play at their own pace and at their own leisure and, and, and to be able to, to garner a handicap. You know, I've got uh, trouble – in my house, getting my girls to brush their teeth um, and eat their breakfast, I can't even control my own home with three girls. You are trying to globally bring women together on one day at one time. I think the the ambitious goal of that is is uh, I applaud it. Number one, but number two, when every year this is your fifth year as you come through, do you still kind of marvel in the fact that this is happening and that your group and organization were able to pull this off? Yes. I do. And this past year we had, you know, and I'm not the technology whiz here, but, you know, we did have data and we do have a, a, a social media person. So we had 47 million impressions that week and 25 million on the day engagements. And those are not all people that are participating, but the fact that whether it's Niall Horan from One Direction, you know, you think about it, he's a UK band guy, you know, singer. Yeah. Who follows them? Young girls. Yep. But couldn't, I couldn't ask for, you know, that does more for us than um, for us, women's golfing, and us as an industry, when more general market people that have notoriety validate golf, encourage people to play golf, especially for new people to get out and try. So I am amazed, and I'm always amazed. I think what really has kept me going is, like I said, these um, smaller markets where this is a big deal, they look forward to it. They like the unity um, of being able to see that they're part of something that's, we all want, I mean, being part of something that's greater than us, that we're all together on that day. And this is I'm certainly the number one person uh, to say this is an us thing, men and women. It is for women because, but, you know, this it doesn't is, happen without no. men. Right. It helps I. everybody. Yourself, yeah. Get yourselves, getting the word out. The, so many people that have gotten behind this from day one, you know, when it was an idea. Steve Mona, World Golf Village, Anthony Scalin, International Golf Federation. Those are people taking a risk in the sense to get behind something that, you know, we didn't really know. Nobody, we didn't really know. I feel like, I just, I feel like I'm like Bill Gates in the garage. <laughs> well, we, we, we understand that. Alyssa, <laughs> Alyssa yeah, Gaudet sure. is our guest, uh, president of Executive Golf International and founder of uh, a Women's Golf Day, June 2nd, 2020. Go to womensgolfday.com to learn more about that. That's perfect. Um, and Alyssa, you know, you mentioned you've done some work with the PGA and you worked for the PGA in the early, early 2000s. Um, you know, what was that work like and how did that mold your idea of what Women's Golf Day would be and kind of what it's become at this point? Yeah, I worked for the PGA Tour um, and from 2000 till uh, 2000 and uh, no, 2001 to 2003, I ran the EMC World Cup in 2002, myself and another guy lived in Mexico for 14 wow. months to put on that event. So that was like my NBA, right. literally, <laughs> right. yeah. of that's you, soup to nuts, everything you learn. And I am forever grateful. You know, I was hired by Ross Berlin and Mike Bodney 
two guys that, um, you know, I guess took a chance. I always laugh. I'm like, I think uh, you, I'm the only person that I was working for a Latin golf tour and I'd met them in Argentina during that World Cup. And I just always say, I think I'm like the only person they knew that had a U.S. passport, knew about golf and spoke Spanish. <laughs> right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you get there. You checked all the boxes. It doesn't matter it's how you get there. <laughs> That's just great. as long as yeah. you're there. Exactly. And I'm Italian, so I'm not even Hispanic. But um, <laughs> it was a, it was an incredible experience. I have so much respect for the PGA Tour. I always will. Um, and all the, you know, the organizations that are out there, I, I, the tour especially, I mean, maybe because of what they've done. I think they've done a really good job and they probably have more ability to do it, to innovate and stay on top of things and um, keep the sport, uh, you know, where it should be going and um, – progressing with technology and what have you. Uh, and I think they've come up with a very good blend. So, you know, and they're all the TPC courses participate. Um, we'll have an announcement soon about, you know, some really fun stuff we're going to do the day before women's golf day that will be online so everybody can access. But, um, you know, thankfully, like I said, this is what you come 20 years. These are relationships. These are, yeah. you know, brothers, sisters, right. <laughs> People, we help each other. Yeah. That's what people, yeah. you know, that is the good thing about our industry. I think that the people that have been in it for a while, there's, uh, there is that respect and camaraderie. And I have, um, I'm always grateful for that, men and women. That's a perfect segue to this. I'm going to pose the same question to you that you posed to many in an article in the Huffington Post uh, some five years ago. Uh, this, is, this was written by you. You said, and I quote, what if all of us in the golf industry and those that play golf some 27 million strong in the USA, decided to personally engage a friend, coworker, relative, neighbor, or even a stranger on a regular basis and start talking about golf. Those are your words, your question. Now I ask you the same question because I'm lazy and I just copied your question. <laughs> I think I've done it. That's what women's golf day <laughs> yeah, is, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, wow. That was like, uh, I don't even remember, didn't even remember that. But, um, that's yeah that's kind of what this has become and hopefully um like i said i encourage all of your listeners to have if their location wants to participate we have right now before march 1st a code it's vip 2020 and that allows them to register for free it's like a 79 dollar value um so the location goes on it's vip 2020 go to womensgolfday.com register a location so whether you have them there or women that like want to have it at their um, location, you know, go in and ask your pro or your GM to, to do it. It's, it's pretty simple. We made it really simple for everybody to uh, get involved at any appetite. Like I said, public or private, they can charge a fee or not. And um, we just encourage them. Like I said, bring a friend, bring your wife, bring your daughter, bring a babysitter, whomever. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's, great. it's a, a incredible cause. It's women's golf day, women's golf day.com. Uh, she is Alyssa Gaudet. She is the uh, president of um, an executive, uh, president of Executive Golf International, and founder of Women's Golf Day. Uh, and also, I, I, I messed up earlier, and I'm just you know I don't do it very often. So I figured, <laughs> what, Mike? I don't like so every every show. I don't mess up very often, <laughs> but I figured since I did that, I would just go ahead and uh, and call it out here. I missed one of your key um, biography notes here that I find incredible, and I can I wouldn't forgive myself if I didn't ask you about it. You played a, you have an IMDb credit. You played a character in the show Nash Bridges. Let's okay. talk about that for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you dig a little further, there's some, uh, you know, boy band music videos. So, uh, uh -oh. right out of college, I modeled and acted uh, for eight years. I'll have to look I was that based up. in LA and I did, um, which gave me a lot of my international experience. I, um, the visas are for four months, so I uh, modeled in uh, Tokyo, Japan, in South Africa, eight summers in Spain. It was um, a wonderful experience I'm super grateful for. Uh, obviously, it's a time-limited thing. Right, yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, so I did do um, I Am Sag and After. Yeah, I did some TV and commercials. And, awesome. and uh, Nash Bridges was what, uh, late 90s, somewhere in that vicinity? Is that right? Yeah, must have. Uh, yeah. Sorry uh, about that. Uh, yeah. Early two, let's go. Er, yeah, there, let's go early two thousands just for our uh, everyone's sanity. Don Johnson. Don Johnson. That's who it was. There I couldn't is. think who the hell it was. Nash yeah. Bridges Don is Don Johnson. Johnson. Yes. 
Okay, relax, I Mike. I didn't realize that you were you celebrated the man's entire catalog. I didn't know who that. I didn't know that's who it was either. <laughs> I didn't think you. I did, did know it, but I didn't know it. Off the Don line, Johnson. So. That's right. Well, you you uh, IMDb credit. <laughs> honest to God, I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, just belabor the point, but I think that's really cool. You've had a, a, an incredible career. You've had a lot that you've done yep. and accomplished. It sounds like you're just getting started as well. She is Alyssa Gaudet from Women's Golf Day. Uh, Alyssa, thank you so much for being on the Stick and Hack Show. We appreciate it very much. Again, VIP 2020 is the code from womensgolfday.com for free entry into uh, this incredible platform and program. And we, uh, we encourage all that are listening to, uh, to help Alyssa's uh, incredible foundation and mission to bring uh, more women and girls into the game of golf it's a it's a pleasure to have you on the show we thank you for your time thanks yeah and we just wanted to mention that that is not oj simpson's glove in the back it's so michelson <laughs> <That's right. laughs> what a, what a way to end the interview yes thank you <laughs> fantastic i think i think for those on uh, you can't commit that's right? right that's right i think for those on video they've been thinking what who the hell's glove is that is that oj simpson's glove <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, listen. Mac. Yep. Well, All right. right. Thank you very much. Be good and uh, and good luck. Guys. Good luck this year. We uh, we yeah, hope to talk to you yeah. again. All right. Thanks so much, Alyssa. All right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. We'll there she you. goes, Alyssa Gaudet from Women's Golf Day. Go to womensgolfday.com and uh, plug in the code VIP2020 uh, and get uh, get your pro and get everybody involved in that. It's it's an incredible uh, incredible deal, and we're excited to, to have her on the show and to be part of it. Yeah, I love it. Um, I think it's a great great. Uh, cause and something that uh, the golf industry needs to focus more on is um, women in golf. Yeah. No, it's, um, it's a desperate. I think it's an untapped market, number one. It is. It's just like they don't do anything for women, in my opinion, at least what I think they should be doing. Right. Um, so well, I, it's, it's, and for me, yeah. I, it's an incredible way for us to connect and, and, um, you know, from husband, wife perspective. And, and, and as I said at the beginning, it was, it was short sighted to me and I was 24 years old and, and, yeah. and I've grown and matured uh, quite a bit, although you probably couldn't tell I've uh, matured <laughs> quite a bit over the last 16, 17 years. Yeah. And I, I look at that as a, as a real moment for us to go yeah. out and, and, and taking the girls too, although it typically ends in whining and crying and we leave the on hole four. <laughs> um, but at, at least we're out there yeah. and, uh, and they're a part of it. So, so it's uh, very exciting. Yeah. It's something that I'm going to, I'm definitely going to try and promote at our, our local yeah. club personally. Yeah. Um, and cause you know, one of the things and in the summers, our club, they do, they do a couple's golf on right. Friday. Oh yeah. Nights. It's great. I think it's once or twice a month and it's always a really great event and, Anyone that goes always has a good time, and, it, yeah. and it's really enjoyable. So. Well, and, it, and it's bringing more people into the game and, yeah. and connecting people. And, and, I mean, her quote is, I, I, I would like to rip it off and put it on our website, quite frankly. Um, where, where was it here? Um, oh, yeah. The, uh, if, if you decided to personally engage a friend, yeah. coworker, relative, neighbor, even a stranger on a regular basis to start talking about golf, that's what Stick and Hack is. That's what we're trying to, yep. to accomplish here. Connect like-minded people and create the world's greatest golf club without the course. So, um, anyway, uh, Alyssa, thank you very much again for, uh, for being on the program. Let's move into the yep. clubhouse now, Mike. This is a game called Snap Judgment, okay? okay. So how, how this works is very simple. I'm going, you have no time to, to make a decision here, okay? And we're yep. going to pretend that you're not looking at it. Yep. Uh, you have no time. To, to make a, a judgment. It's called snap judgment, and we start the clock. Uh, Producer Shane, can you start the clock? He's got five seconds for snap judgment. Who is your favorite golfer, not Tiger? This will date me, but Fred Couples. Okay. Do you wish you had a dedicated your life to golf? Ooh, that's a tough one for me. Um, yes judgment. and no. Snap, no, oh, dumb. It's, yeah, well, because oh, here's the thing. God. Question the reason two, I, I'm already oh annoyed. Right. I don't need to, yes or no. Do you wish you had dedicated your life to golf? Yes. Dedicated, there we go. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Finally, we're getting into the truth oh of my, of my game. <laughs> All right, what is the most overrated, we're playing a, a game called Snap Judgment. What is the most overrated course in the world? Ooh, I'm going to say this and it's going to yeah. be really bad. I can't wait. Locally, Crooked Stick. Oh, Crooked Stick in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. In our uh, Carmel, specifically. I our, love our, the course, and it's, it's fantastic, but it's not that difficult. And Most overrated course in the world like is. is Crooked Stick. I'm going to repeat that for those. I'm never going to play. Pull. I'm never playing no, there again. No, no. no <laughs> we're going to put that on, We're going to put that on a loop. I just totally screwed myself. No. And us. I know. It's fine. Specific, whatever. It's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, snap Judgment is the game here in the clubhouse at Stick and Hack Show. Uh, question four. Snap Judgment. Does Milkshake really bring all the boys to the yard? <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> I apologize. I thought that'd be funny. 
Look, that's I my step. That's my step judgment. Yeah. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, snap judgment. Question five: Could you win or have won the big break? Oh man, could you have won the big break? Or if they re- if they bring it back, could could you win it? I don't know. Maybe. Really? If I dedicated myself to it, maybe. Well, you yeah, and you're dedicated yourself. Okay, fine. Um, and then the last question: Snap judgment. You have uh, five seconds. Do you play golf with me only for the sake of the show? Yep. You already you knew have, the answer to that question. You have you five seconds. To answer that question. You have five seconds to answer. You already knew the answer to that question. I didn't hear the music started. Did yes. not hear your answer. Yes. Do you play golf with me only for the sake of the show? Yes. Is this mic not on? <laughs> <laughs> Second Act Show presented by Perfect Pro Ams. <laughs> A unique Pro-Am experience for all golfers. Go to perfectproams.com to learn more and sign up today. Go to stickandhack.com and read and watch the stories of golf. Join the community of like-minded golfers and as we create the world's greatest golf club without the course. Sign up for free membership, get free stuff, instantly change your life. It's the Stick and Hack Show, stickandhack.com. Mike, proud of you. Great show. Alyssa Gaudet, the guest, Women's Golf Day. Go to womensgolfday.com as well. It's three sites you have to go to. We just spent the next half hour going to websites. Congratulations. Great show. Thanks. Peace out, guys. See ya. The Stick and Hack Show is now over. Subscribe, rate, comment, and tell your friends. You are now free to go about your day.